Palm Sunday. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheek to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise, your, praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but he emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave. And he became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in heaven and on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Today we begin Holy Week. Now in ancient times, this was known as the Great Week. The Passion narratives come to life as if enacted before our very eyes. Step by step, we follow the path Christ trod during the last days of his mortal life. Like the people of Jerusalem, we too joyfully acclaim Christ as our King. He enters the holy city, however, not as a warrior king with a great army, but as a humble and gentle Messiah humble and riding on a donkey, as it says in the book of Zechariah. The donkey was regarded as a beast of burden. Christ, as it were, does the donkey work for us in his sacred passion. In the book of Isaiah, it says that God burdened him with the sins of all of us. Ours were the sufferings he bore. Ours were the sorrows he carried. It is also worth noting that, that at the time of our Lord, it was customary for a king to ride on a donkey if he was on a mission of peace, whereas the horse usually carried those going to war. In this sense, Christ the King will bring peace to all those who make a home for him in their hearts. His is also a kingdom of truth. And as Jesus said to Pilate, all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. So the procession of palms today is not just pageantry. 
we take part in it with a lively faith and devotion. Even today, the triumph of Easter is foreshadowed, the palm branch being the emblem of that victory. The book of Revelation tells us that the saints in heaven hold palm branches in their hands. So, we don't just look back at a past event, but to future glory. Our humble prayer today on Palm Sunday is that we may follow Christ into the new and everlasting Jerusalem of heaven. The first reading speaks about a suffering servant in the book of Isaiah. The sufferings of this mysterious figure in the Old Testament prefigure those of Christ, even though they were written about 800 years before. His humility in accepting insult and derision is brought out in the second reading, and even more so in the Gospel where he was mocked, jeered, and indeed spat upon. Accepting all this with humility, and for our sakes, is at the heart of this self-emptying of Jesus, this kenosis. He assumed the condition of a slave, the scriptures tell us. The Passion account, which we are about to hear, comes from St. Luke today. It never fails to make a deep impression. It sets us up and puts us in the right frame of mind for the coming celebrations in the week ahead. Thank you all for listening. And God bless you all.